The second season of Luke Cage follows the hero in the aftermath of The Defenders as he grapples with his fame, love life, family struggles, Mariah Dillard, Stokes, Mariah Stokes. Uh, sorry, Stokes. While also going up against a new threat in Bushmaster. Hey everyone, Greg here, and this is the spoiler-filled review for season two of Luke Cage. This video will break down season two, dive into the best Easter eggs, references, and what it all means for season three. And warning, a whole bunch of spoilers ahead. But first, make sure to subscribe to Universe where we got you covered for comic deep dives, TV breakdowns, and movie reviews. The plot for season two follows Luke as he's now a celebrity figure in Harlem with an increased pressure to protect the community from the rival gangs who could care less about his bulletproof skin. Not only does Luke have to deal with Mariah and Shades, but he's forced to evaluate just where the line between being a hero stops and being a villain begins with the introduction of John Bushmaster MacGyver. Vengeance belong to the Lord. Hmm. Where the Lord can have it back when we're done with it. So the big question going into season two is whether or not it could buck the trend of the last few MCU shows and not hit that dreaded sophomore slump. While there are still some of the same missteps that the previous season suffered from, that includes 13 episodes with way too much dead weight and a number of strange character decisions. I'm looking at you, Shades. With that said, season two is incredibly bold, has a message, and some of the best action pieces that the Netflix Marvel series has produced. And on top of all this is an incredible cast with amazing performances from show newcomers Mustafa Shakir and the final performance from Reggie Cathy. Bulletproof skin doesn't change nature. Right off the bat, the most refreshing thing about season two is that the story is carefully paced this time around. Now, it is not perfect. In fact, there's still an argument to be made that Netflix should trim down all the MCU shows to eight episodes or fewer. Also, season two doesn't make the same mistake that hurt the first season. Two villain storylines that result in a subpar second half of the season. Can you dig it? The cast for season two is exceptional. Even though Mahershala Ali isn't around, the performances don't take a major hit as many assume they would. I love Mustafa Shakira's performance as Bushmaster. He never tries to emulate what Ali did with Cottonmouth. Instead, he plays the role with a little bit of vulnerability. Just like we saw with Killmonger and Black Panther, Bushmaster isn't really the adversary for Luke as the season progresses. The main battle for the two of them is with Mariah. When one seek vengeance, it must dig two grave. That's not enough holes for me. Another standout part of the series is the music, which comes from Adrian Young and Ali Shaheed Muhammad. The music acts give the show a sense of joy while fitting thematically, just like in Twin Peaks The Return, and features some amazing talent like Gary Clark Jr., Esperanza Spaulding, and Stephen Marley. Okay, now let's talk Easter eggs. Now there are way too many to list, so I'm just gonna go through a few of my favorites. Throughout the whole season, you can spot multiple pop culture nods on DW's merch. This includes Power Man, Run DMC, and Danny Rand can be spotted wearing a Sweet Xmas shirt. Sweet Christmas. Viewers may also notice that DW is wearing a shirt bearing the slogan, Hell Up in Harlem, with the subtitle, The Battle for Lenox Avenue. Now, Hell Up in Harlem is the title of a classic 1973 blaxploitation movie starring Fred Williamson. And the movie actually shares many of the same themes and plot points to this season of Luke Cage. There's corrupt politicians, gang slinging dope, and of course, Harlem gang wars. Fred Williamson, he may never get to heaven, but he's raising hell up in Harlem. In the third episode of the new season, Misty Knight and Colleen Wing throw down against some thugs at a local bar. Now, this is a direct reference to the Daughters of the Dragon comic series. In the comics, after Misty and Colleen became friends, the two created a private investigator firm named Nightwing Restorations. The two were dubbed the Daughters of the Dragon due to their abilities in martial arts. The duo even sports outfits that resemble the comic characters. Old school Luke Cage fans might have noticed an awesome nod to the comics in an exchange between Piranha and Luke in the season sixth episode. So wait, hold on. Why are you questioning me? You work for me. I'm paying you. You are my hero for hire. Well, where's my money, honey? This line is pulled directly from Luke Cage, Hero for Hire number nine, where Cage finds himself hired by Dr. Doom. <laughs> Episode 10, The Main Ingredient, is easily my favorite episode of the season, and possibly my favorite in Netflix's Marvel Universe. Danny Rand shows up to help Luke in what's essentially a self-contained story that gives fans an awesome Heroes for Hire moment. 
Showrunner Cheo Hidari Coker spoke to Collider about the use of Iron Fist in the show and how they were able to pull off that awesome moment. Coker said, It was going to be different than The Defenders and his own show. We were going to do it our way. We were lucky enough that both Marvel and Netflix allowed us to play a little bit because I wanted to give him a different swagger. It was awesome, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm actually excited to see Danny Rand in the upcoming season of Iron Fist scheduled to drop this year. Season 2 ended on a series of substantial and unpredicted notes. Mariah Dillard is dead, leaving her daughter Tilda as the obvious potential replacement villain for Season 3 as she has become her comic book alter ego once and for all, Nightshade. Shades Alvarez is in prison and Bushmaster is out of the picture. This leaves the field wide open for a new villain to take the center stage in Season 3. Don't do this. You don't have to do it like this. Somebody has to. Luke Cage has become the new power broker between Harlem's feuding crime factions. Rather than taking out violent crime altogether, his new role involves maintaining a peaceful status quo for Harlem. The season ends with him in charge of the Harlem's Paradise nightclub, left to him in Mariah Dillard's will. Don't think that I will hesitate to take you down if you start acting a fool. I'm counting on it. After a cool nod to the Godfather ending with Luke and Misty at the end of the season, we won't be surprised if this sets him up against Misty Knight next season, given her role as a police detective. As for Luke's personal life, it looks like he and Claire Temple have officially called it quits. And Rosario Dawson has gone on record multiple times about her desire to be scaled back from the Marvel Netflix universe. With that said, could Jessica Jones pop back up in the next season? While that's highly unlikely, we do think there will be another major cameo for the next season. No, not Iron Fist, but Frank Castle himself. The seeds were planted throughout the season with an increased amount of brutality than what we witnessed in season one. We can see a scenario where Frank is pushed to the edge by Rosalie Carbone and winds up going toe to toe with Luke just to get to her. Now don't expect season three until around 2020. But with that said, you'll likely see Luke and many characters appear in other Netflix series. Misty Knight is confirmed for the second season of Iron Fist, and you can bet we'll see the Daughters of the Dragon storyline play out much more. One final note, Coker has said that he would love to shoot a Heroes for Hire spinoff series with Luke and Iron Fist. And all I can say to that is, yes. Yes! Oh God, yes! Thanks for watching everybody. Let us know what you thought of the season in the comment section down below. What were your favorite moments in Easter eggs? Uh, am I wrong? Did you enjoy all 13 episodes? You didn't think anything should be cut? Let me know. And until next time, keep it here at the GameSpot Universe. Bye-bye.